Right then. So where we're at is we looked at how do we find investors? How do we pitch credi credibly to investors? How do we look at what they're looking for? What are we going to offer them, which we've looked at initially and we're going to cover more during the weekend. So we've looked really at the pros and the cons of, um, shall, I, shall I get uh, lending? where I'm entirely pinned to the wall for it? Or shall I do joint ventures, which is a lot more labor intensive and a lot more kind of relationship intensive? And so we've looked at finding them. We've looked at screening them with your three core questions. What's your objective? What's your time frame? And how much is your pot? And you're really almost looking to pull out the APR, if you like, of somebody's goal because then you can figure out, is it a fit if not? And I think the conclusion is very clear, isn't it, in the room, that you're not trying to push people into anything, you're just looking to make enough connections with people so that the right person fits you and you fit the right person. It's just like dating, isn't it? Beyonce, you know, if you liked it, you should have put a ring in it. And then we covered very early on the statistics and my statistics are going to be no different from yours so to raise a million pound was 40 <laughs> coffees and then on top of the 40 coffees you're going to with 20 of those people they're going to say no so you'll have one two or three interactions with them and then they'll say no thank you very much lovely of you to offer me the opportunity but not for me and then the other 20 people will statistically say yes and you're going to have between five and nine touch points and on average it'll be six months and so for you to raise the money you need to do all that work now so I think we worked out it was about 200 what we might call touch points with 40 people some will have seven some will have two fine and then I hope that that seemed almost um, more realistic for you guys more measurable more normalized in a way just another thing to do and for you guys, if you're going to run a fundraising campaign and I, if you are raising private finance, I don't want you to just be like, I'm going to raise some money. No, I want you to talk in these terms. I'm running a fundraising campaign. You may be going, I'm running a fundraising campaign. Woo! Am I? Woo! You know, in the same terms of I'm a property investor. Honestly, you know, because your confidence is growing into feeling account, you know, that you're not the imposter syndrome that David talked about. I want you to say, I'm running a fundraising campaign. Me, myself, I and the Nutella jar ran a fundraising campaign. Um, how credible do you think I felt? Not at all. But I knew I had to do it to achieve my goal. I, 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 I always told the truth. So um, I was very clear that my second purchase was a house with an aluminium roof. I mean, yes, I bought it for 85,000. Yes, it was worth 130 done up. So yes, I know my stuff. <laughs> still got an aluminium roof, still does now. <laughs> I don't, I'm not going to replace it until it wears out. It's been there since the war, so that's fine. Um, so, so it's about saying I am running a fundraising campaign. And as a professional, running a fundraising campaign requires a business plan, requires um, a list of hot prospects, requires a list of long prospects, requires a process. And we're going to talk through that process now. And it almost just gives you permission. It requires a package of marketing, not jazzy, shiny, promise the earth marketing, because therein lies some real flaws. The person we mentioned this morning who's owed some money um, that put on Facebook, I'm owed money um, and it's 4% a month. Well, you know, if you lent money at 48%, you know, with the best will in the world, and I hope your money comes back, whoever that person is, what did you expect? You know, that's a shiny package of unrealistic expectations. And I want you to put together a package of realistic expectations so that you're looking for a fit. If the right person comes along, you fit together, which is why you've got the numbers in the first place. So now that we've kind of almost made it a little bit practical, you know, there might be an Excel spreadsheet or two in there. Shall we now talk through process again to almost demystify it, make it seem a little bit less daunting? Yeah, raise a million quid. Well, frankly, guys, that's 40 coffees. Great. You know, do the 40 coffees, but it's 40 coffees. So, so now that's demystified, isn't it? Well, you've been going into how, because getting to the million is, is 400 people or 400 prospects. Yes. Leads. Yes. Um, how do you get the 400 leads? 10% uh, of them are in this room. 40 people in this room today. Well, I think it's maybe about 45. Have you collected every single business card and made an appointment to speak with every single person? 
and that's how you collect the, the, the leads. Yeah. Um, you have genuinely no idea who is, I have some idea because I know people's circumstances. You have no idea who's got money, uh, who doesn't have money, who's got an inclination to work with third party partners.